four months after the Taliban takeover, Afghanistan is in a state of economic catastrophe, with more than half its people unable to feed themselves. 60% of the population is in acute hunger. There used to be a war, but there were jobs and money to buy food. Now the jobs are gone and people are struggling to afford basic staples, with costs rising sharply. Savings have been used up, possessions sold. Women, who mostly bear the brunt of providing meals for their families, have seen their right to paid work eroded. Reinstating that right, alongside guaranteeing education for all girls, protection for religious minorities and allowing political opposition may well be the compromises Taliban leaders will have to make to secure essential aid from foreign governments and other agencies. But the million children estimated to be at risk of dying from hunger this winter can't wait. The Disasters Emergency Committee hopes its appeal will bring urgent supplies delivered directly to those who need them. Without this support, the country faces a humanitarian disaster. And joining us now is Fozia Kufi, who was vice president of the National Assembly in Afghanistan until the Taliban took power. Ms. Kufi, welcome to the program. Um, just how dire is the situation? We're hearing about people starving, unable to access health care. Well, there are obvious reasons uh, for the situation to be a humanitarian catastrophe because people have not been paid for months. Uh, women are pushed to stay home, no jobs. Um, and of course, uh, the, the development project and humanitarian projects are stopped. Stop. And the power in Kabul have not really been able to uh, give any plan in terms of tackling the situation, except uh, you know back-to-back -back decrees that will further uh, oppress uh, journalists, uh, freedom, uh, and, and liberties. Afghanistan already, let's remember that already before the fall, the collapse, Afghanistan was um, uh, in poverty line. 55% of the society, the population, according to the World Food, uh, according to the, um, uh, well, uh, you know, according to the World Bank, was uh, under poverty line. So you add uh, all the recent crisis to that, of course, the situation is very, very dire. And the sad thing is that the power in Kabul is not really willing to come up with any plan to uh, control the situation. Is there going to be a moment where there's going to have to be compromise with the Taliban to make sure that people don't die from starvation? Well, I think uh, th th there is always a room for compromise, but the Taliban must also be flexible. What we want as people of Afghanistan is not coming from sky. These are very basic demand. Everyone wants the Taliban to let women and girls to go to school and go to work. Because with this humanitarian catastrophe, it's actually the women who have been working and being, being the breadwinners of their family that have not been now paid for months and they cannot feed their children. They need to let girls go to school like many other Muslim countries. They're actually doing on the contrary to the Islamic principle by stopping girls from going to school. They need to form an inclusive government which has a legitimacy inside the country because even if they have international legitimacy, if they do not have national legitimacy by inclusive government and letting everybody to live in their country, of course, they will not be able to sustain. So therefore, I think our demands are very basic. I want international community, especially the UK and US and European countries and the UN to focus on a political dialogue, facilitating promoting a political dialogue so that we have a government, because right now we all know that it's an yeah. interim setup, right? So it paves the way for a more settled, uh, permanent settlement. Let's all focus on that, because the more we focus on humanitarian crisis, which is something we have to really prioritize, the more uh, we face a humanitarian crisis, because yeah. if there is no political stability, it's like a vicious circle. We will continue to face this dire situation. Yeah. Do you think the sanctions process could be conducted differently? Could it be more targeted, perhaps, so that it doesn't impact the, the millions of civilians in the country? I think there are always ways that uh, the uh, aid could go to the people, and there should not be really any question about uh, that aid going to the people. It could go through the UN. It could go through a lot of these civil society NGOs, non-governmental organizations that are still operating in Afghanistan. It could go through the CDCs, the Community Development Councils. There are all ways that we can reach out to people. I think a little bit the UN should get out of their bureaucracy and immediately reach out to the people. And 
the, the de facto power should actually not take the people as a hostage. They need to also make it easy for humanitarian organizations to reach to the, uh, the you know different levels and uh, different parts of Afghanistan without any political you know position on neutral basis. Indeed, Fazia Kufi, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.